Hi, this is John, VE6EY, with a short video on using GNU Radio to explore the Gritzel filter, uh, which is very useful for single tone detection. And in this video, I'm going to show you the problem I was trying to address and uh, how you can use GNU Radio to simulate performance of filters in terms of learning how they work and what you can do with them. So we're going to start out by looking at an article I published last year on my <coughs> website, Making It Up, uh, where I built a uh, Arduino-based Morse code decoder. And uh, what you want to do there is uh, detect a single frequency, a single tone uh, coming out of your uh, radio receiver, and then uh, decode it from Morse code into uh, characters, into letters. And so basically, you need to convert the audio coming in uh, <coughs> to the computer from the time domain to the frequency domain. Uh, because as you can see in this picture here, even though the uh, time domain or analog signal is a whole bunch of squiggles representing uh, sounds and tones, uh, you can't tell what frequency they are very easily because they're very complex. And the uh, uh, frequency domain, uh, you can use something called the Fourier transform to change the audio signal into a spectrum of tones or a spectrum of singles on individual frequencies. So when you look at this picture, let's just say my Morse code signal coming in was on 750 or 500 hertz or something like that. The uh, Fourier transform would give you a single tone at that frequency at which you could measure and then decode. Now the problem with the FFT is it's very computationally expensive. It, it uses lots of calculations and you need to basically figure out a way to do it more efficiently, especially if you're trying to set up a Morse decoder on, uh, on an Arduino. And uh, a very good way to do that is to use a really simple filter called the Gertzel filter. Uh, which you can set up to uh, basically run on your Arduino or anywhere else, and you tell it what your sampling frequency is, what your target frequency that you're trying to find is, and the number of samples you want to evaluate in order to see if that frequency actually is showing up uh, in, the, in the signal. And the selection of the number of samples you need to take affects the timing, uh, because if you take more samples uh, to detect the tone, then it takes longer for each uh, each uh, sample uh, to be read. Uh, the uh, Gertzel algorithm is described very well by Richard Lyons on a uh, website called Embedded.com. You can look up this article for yourself. <clears throat> but basically, he contains here a description of the number of calculations needed for the Gertzel filter on a single frequency versus an FFT or DFT, and uh, quite a few less computations. And you get basically what's called a single bin Fourier transform, where your frequency of interest is, is captured and you can measure how strong it is. And so <clears throat> what I was trying to do with the Arduino uh, Morse decoder was making sure I got the timing right, because uh, Morse decoding Basically, Morse runs at 10 to 40 words a minute usually, and so the duration of each single Morse code element ranges from 120 milliseconds down to 30 milliseconds. Uh, and if you want to sample two or three times <coughs> per uh, timing interval, just to make sure you catch the rising and falling edges of the tone, you have to really be careful as to how many samples you're going to take uh, to make your Gertzel filter work. So there's enough of that, and uh, using GNU Radio, I basically built a model uh, where I emitted a tone of 750 hertz at 8 kilosamples per second and measured the performance of a Gertzel filter, a longer filter of 100 samples and a smaller one of 20 samples, and just see how that worked. And if we take a look here, here's my single tone on 750 uh, hertz, or kilohertz rather, and uh, uh, 750 hertz, or 0.75 kilohertz, that's representing my Morse code signal. And <clears throat> what I wanted to know is as I tune the filter above and below, uh, how good does the filter, do, uh, how good a job it does in terms of signaling what I'm, what I'm hearing. So if we look here, <clears throat> this diagram shows the short filter 
measuring the power of a signal and it's measuring this power over 20 samples or two and a half milliseconds and a longer filter 100 samples measuring the power of the the tone over 12 and a half milliseconds and the way the Gertzel filter works is you take n number of samples be it 20 or 100 and then after that time the Gertzel filter sends out a signal that measures the magnitude squared or the power of what's being received so let's just say we tune the filter uh, down from 750 hertz which is the tones uh, what the tone is on let's say we change this down to 700 hertz now you can see with a long filter you're getting a much narrower bandwidth because the power being measured is dropped down to about 1.4 whereas for the shorter number of samples you have a wider bandwidth because your power has only dropped from 6.2 at full peak to 5.8 and if you drop it down to say 650 hertz basically your long filter says there's nothing there <laughs> it's gone away but your shorter filter is still reading 4.9 or 5. So when you're decoding Morse code, you need to set a threshold at some level and say, basically, say, if it's above 5, then there's a tone there, and if it's below 5, then there's no tone there, and that's how I'm going to decode. But whether or not that works, uh, the threshold value works, depends on the length of your filter. It won't work very well for a short filter, but it works just fine for a long filter. So if we come back up now to, uh, say... 800 hertz which is just above the frequency uh, there again your long filter would be showing there's no tone there and your short filter would be showing almost full scale so when you're playing this game with your Gertzel filter you need to really figure out how many samples you need to take given your sampling rate to get the peak uh, to respond within the amount of time that you have available to you Here's how to set up a, uh, a little model in GNU Radio, basically a signal source. That's my tone, that's my Morse code tone that you're seeing in the, uh, in the display on uh, 750 hertz. Uh, I'm running two Gertzel filters. I'm taking that same tone and I'm running one through a long Gertzel filter and one through a short Gertzel filter. You take the output and convert the complex number to a reading of magnitude squared, which is the same as power, and then you show it in a, uh, in a block diagram on the screen, basically a meter that shows what, what level you're getting out of it. And when you do that, you get a very nice way to simulate what kind of length of filter you might want, how responsive it is, where you might need to set your... Uh, your threshold for decoding Morse code, and so on. It's a very, uh, very nice way you can use GNU Radio to learn how filters work and experiment with them. And in this case, we've been doing some experimenting, trying to figure out the best way to use a Gertzel filter to decode Morse code and have it run on an Arduino. The Gertzel filter is a great single tone detector to run on an Arduino because it's very, very fast and it doesn't require much in the way of, uh, of computation. That's an example of using GNU Radio and uh, learning more about uh, software-defined radio and DSP. I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, we'll talk to you again. Thank you.